address a lot of our problems. So when we talked about pastor appreciation, we talked about songs, and um, so of course, I wrote one. And it goes to the tune of, thank God, he's a country boy, but it's praise God. in the donia is kind of laid back ain't nothing old preacher boy he can't take it's early to rise and staying up late praise god he's a preacher man yeah he grew up in the hood running wild and free his brothers gave him grief till he hid in the trees his parents taught him how to go to church respectfully praise god he's a preacher man well, he's got him a wife and two lovely children. He tears up the drums and strums up the gitter. Preaches from the good book and drives like a critter. Praise God, he's a preacher man. He goes to see the sick, the sad, and the lost. He wants to spread the word of God no matter what it costs. He shares the love of God wherever he goes. Praise God, he's a preacher man. Well, he's got him a wife and two lovely children. He tears up the drums and strums up the gitter. Preaches from the good book and drives like a critter. Praise God, he's a preacher man. Well, he's got him a wife and two lovely children. He tears up the drums and strums up the gitter. Preaches from the good book and drives like a critter. Whoa, snap. He's our preacher man. Yeah. Time to praise the Lord, so let's stand up and sing praises to the Lord.
we can go home now. Um, first of all, uh, Caleb and Michael, y'all got the best Chris hair, okay? Chris, we had, we had some fellas dress up. Keith, uh, <laughs> you and me both, man. But that's just, the, you know, we did that to our pastor, you know. He's got pretty good hair, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Considering his dad's hair, he's got good hair. <laughs> but um, I got to start by uh, telling a little story, of course, and then we're going to pray. But I got to tell the story first. We're going to read a piece of scripture. I won't be long. I just want to honor our, our pastor by talking to the congregation about how we should honor our But, um, you know, Chris, he's not an avid hunter, I would say, but I know he's hunted before. But Randy Tanner, which is not here today, and I'm disappointed in that, and Jim Griffin, they took him hunting one day. And as they were walking down the road, you know, go to, to get into deer stand or whatever, they, you know, I don't know, I think they was in deer stand. Jim's going, yeah. But he don't even know the story. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, they're walking along, and this big old buck just steps out, I mean, like 75 yards, because, of course, you know, they stepped it off after they shot it. But it just automatically, all three of them just simultaneously, which, Craig, that means at the same time. They simultaneously just bang, 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 all three of them shot. And the big buck just dropped right there. So they all walk up there, and they walking up there, and they looking, and, and they see in the buck's edge, you know, and then, of course, they see one bullet hole in the deer. And, of course, the debate starts. We'll say a debate, okay? It wasn't an argument. Well, who shot the deer? And, of course, Randy, being the deer slayer that he is, <laughs> You know, he's saying, y'all know that I'm pretty good shot and I don't miss deer. I shoot and I kill. And then Jim, he's over there figuring <laughs> you know, scope set just this way for 75 feet or 75 yards. It was my shot. And then humble Chris. <laughs> he's over there. You could give me this, you know. Y'all could give me this. I know I shot this deer, but it's okay. If you guys want to take it, that's fine. Take the claim. And about that time, a gay born came up. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, he could hear them. You know, they, I mean, Randy and Jim, they were getting loud. Chris wasn't. And the gay born said, what's going on? What y'all what y'all talking about? What's going on? He said, well, we, we, we killed this deer. Some, one of them, we all shot at the same time. Told a story, you know, said, they ain't but one bullet hole. He said, well, I'll, I can figure it out. I'll figure it out who did it. He walked over there. I mean, he was over there just a second. He looked at the deer and goes, yep, I know who shot that deer. And they go, wow, that quick. How do you know? He said, the preacher shot that deer. He said, how do you know that? He goes, because it went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> and that's how much we love our pastor. pray. I'm going to read a piece of scripture before I, before I read it though. It's just one verse. Excuse me, two verses. But let's just let God open our hearts and minds this morning when I read about honoring our pastor. Thank you right now for your presence in this Thank you for giving us the ability to, to enjoy and and feel good about our pastor, dear Lord. And Father, as we honor him today. Father, we just want to give you the praise and honor and glory because it was because of you and what you did in his life that he's pastoring at this church, your church, right? Now. Hearts and our minds, Father. Open our hearts and our minds that we can see you and see how we should be, Father. And we just thank you for this time right now, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13 say these words. This is Paul. It says, um, Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you 
and give spiritual guidance. Show them respect and wholehearted love because of their work. Um, this morning, you know, or this month, October, is known for many things. It's breast cancer. This month, that's a whole other story right there, right? Y'all don't, don't even want to know that. Never mind. It's funny, but I'm not going to talk about it. Breast cancer, it's um, De Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It's uh, Liver Awareness Month. It's Healthy Lung Month. It's Down Syndrome Awareness Month. It's Infidelity Awareness Month. It's Spina Bifida Awareness Month. It's SIDS Awareness Month. And so many more. But it's also Pastor Appreciation Month. And you know, on top of all these things that we sell, or we um, may support, things that I've mentioned there, one thing we need to do and not forget is to honor our pastor. You know, Paul spoke in these words. He knew that, minister, the, that ministers is often, being a minister is often a thankless job or a thankless work. They give and give and give, but rarely receive. They don't do it for the monetary rewards, because rewards, Chris can tell you, it ain't that much, is it, Bubba? But anyway, they don't do it for that. They do it, you know, Chris does this is because that when you're called to serve, Nothing else will satisfy. And Chris has been called to serve, and nothing else will satisfy. A simple thank you goes a long way. Uh, a card that tells him how much he has ministered to you works well also. Uh, each of us, each one of us, has different ways that we can show appreciation to our pastor. It's the simple, way, it's the simple ways to say thank you and show our appreciation to you. Paul said them, which is to show them respect that they deserve for the work they do. You know, most church workers don't see this. Those late night, those late night phone calls, those late night texts. They don't know about all the hospital visits, the all night hospital visits, the all day hospital visits, the all day staying at someone or whole afternoon visits that the pastor is sitting there by someone that's hurting a church family and he's laying there and they're laying in the bed and he's there to support the family. But here's what you also don't understand. Sometimes we don't understand this. Sometimes you don't, we don't think that the pastor, even though he's there supporting this family, is hurting too. One of his church be his friend. One of his good friends is laying in that bad hurt, bed hurt, so he hurts too, right? They also, you know, so we, so we wear, so when you do wear these different ribbons that we wear to support different things, let's remember that don't forget to give attention to our pastor um, who gives you spiritual guidance. He gives every, he's given every last one of us spiritual guidance. Each of us has been impacted by our past, by our pastor. Here's what I want to do right now. If if this young man, this short little good hair fellow, has impacted your life in any way, if he's ministered to you, if he's counseled to you, if he's gave you support, would you please stand? See that, Chris? He's touched each one of your lives, has he not? <laughs> Amen. Commodore says you touched his too. Let's give him a round of applause, fellas. Y'all can be seated. Thank y'all for doing that. You know, the ministry is a blessed life, but it's not an easy life. Pastors and their families have all the exact same troubles that we have. But on top, of the, on top of that, the Apostle Paul, they have what the Apostle Paul calls the care of all the churches. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 says these words, Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern for all the churches. He has everybody, he's, he has the whole community, the whole church that he has to take care of. 
People sometimes joke these things like the pastor, you know, he, Chris, he don't, works but one, he don't work but one day a week. Maybe two, if you count Wednesday, right? But it's really, this guy is on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Amen? He's on call every day. The person who has the hardest job, though, you know, is not Pastor Chris. It's the lady that sits right by his side. It's Jamie. She shares her husband. Here's why. Because she shares her husband with the whole congregation, the whole church, the whole community, and their needs. And he, and listen, she has to sit there and listen to his problems. Right, Jamie? And here's the other thing. <laughs> How about this? You've had children. Most of us in the room have had children. You, do you remember how hard it was when they were young and little and growing up in church and, and you had to take care of them while they were in the pews, how hard that was? And I know those two were pretty rough when they were younger. <laughs> right? Jamie didn't have that because what? Chris was behind the pulpit. She had to handle them all by herself. Right, Jamie? And that's tough. But Jamie, Jamie he's, he needs that support, and Jamie is that support. Like Wayne said, she is the backbone of that pastor right there. And so not only should we support him, respect and honor him, we should respect and honor his wife also. And, you know, regardless of your role in the church, regardless of how much you think this pastor might like you or might not like you, which you know that's not true, because what does the man preach all the time? Can y'all just holler it? Love. They know, Chris. They know. Because he preaches love. No matter what, it's love. But he loves each and every one of you. You should and can appreciate your pastor. We can easily and far too often take our pastor for granted. You know, it can easily be said or we can easily criticize him on how good a job he did in his sermon saying things like this. You know, I wasn't a big fan of that sermon today. Or this. I didn't really get to connect with that sermon today, Chris. Or how about this? You know, I think you could have done a little bit better job preparing <laughs> for that sermon. We far too often then forget that he is human. And he has a life and a family and responsibilities all throughout the week, just like us. He's just a regular guy that God's called to serve and preach and minister. Be our shepherd. We can easily think that a pastor is just there to serve us. And listen, this is important. Because see, I'm not preaching to Chris, I'm preaching to you guys. I'm talking, I don't, I'm preaching. I'm talking to you guys. He's not there just to serve us. He, wait a minute. We can easily think that this pastor is there to, to, to serve us and deliver a sermon that we want to hear. And if either of these doesn't go our way, we want it to. We forget that our pastor is also pastoring to an entire congregation just because it's something we might not want to hear that day. And if we're not careful, and this is important, we may fall victim to the spirit of this word right here, entitlement. Where it's all about who? Me. Me. It's all about us. And listen, while it may not be, the, the case might not be that extreme or whatever, you know, as far as, we need to remember that Chris is here for everyone on this church. Um, it's something we all need to keep into consideration. Remember that even if one person, here's the thing, even if you might said one of those things, oh, I didn't get much out of that sermon today, here's what we need to remember, guys. Here's what we need to remember. If one person in that congregation, or a person's life is changed because of that message, isn't that what it's all about? If one person comes to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, isn't that what it's all about? Amen? Because it ain't about me. It's about we. And he's preaching to we. Right? Billy Graham. A little bit better pastor than Chris. Amen? <laughs> the great evangelist. 
once said these words. The test of a preacher is that his congregation goes away not saying, what a lovely sermon, but I will do something. I will do something for the Lord. It says in Hebrews 13, verse 7, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden. For that would be of no benefit to you. So let's give, make it joyful for our pastor to be here and preach to us and minister to us. Because, you know, most everybody in this room stood up when they say, you know, this guy's touched my life. He's ministered to me. He's counseled me. He's guided me. He's taught me. He's discipled me. All of those things I'm saying he did to me. And I'm so thankful for it. Um, listen, if this has touched you, I know Chris wants to get up here and say something, so we've got another 30 minutes of sitting up in here, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, we want to give an invitation, Jody, if you would come to the piano, please, ma'am. And I know Chris wants to, we got, a, you know, Chris, we got something we want to present you. We got some things we want to present you. It's just pieces of paper, okay? It's envelopes with nothing in it, just pieces of paper, okay? <laughs> but, um, Chris, and, and we want to do this. You love your pastor, amen? amen. We love our pastor. We're going to pray for him. We're going to, he's going to come up here after this invitation. I want him to come up here with me. We're going to stand up here. And then he's going to say something also. And then, and then after that, we're going to, um, we're going to, we're going to let, come lay hands on him, and we're going to pray for our pastor. And the pastor appreciates it. And Jamie and her family. Jamie, we would like for you all to come up when we do that, too. The two little girls. Eh. Please stand together as we sing from, if I can find the words. I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior Turn it over to Chris for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amen. No, I, I just want to tell you thank you. And uh, they, they really didn't tell me what was happening today. And uh, they said that I, I, I don't have to worry and, uh, and it'll be all good. And they were right. Um, I just have no words, but I just love you. It's been a blessing. You know, it's, it's really awesome. Um, I, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, you know, come on, uh, kids and my, my awesome wife. I know a lot of pastors, and I've uh, been friends with numerous pastors over these last si 16 years. And um, I've heard some really amazing things and some really hurtful things. But God truly has blessed me. And uh, 
this these 16 years here, and he's not only given me a uh, best friend to do ministry with, but he's blessed me with kids. And, uh, you know, I used to joke with Jimmy and said, I have like 10 kids, and I've just had two, and that's, well, that's plenty, you know, uh, uh, you know, and, uh, but um, I view many of you as not just my brothers and sisters, but my kids, and I love you, you know, I, I do, so. Uh, that's all I wanted to say, and uh, yeah, that's it. Well, listen, and, um, we're going to do time, we're going, if y'all want to come on up, we're going to pray for our pastor. No, we'll we'll close it with. Yeah. Oh, buddy, we love you. We love you. Jamie, we love you. Love y'all. I like y'all's hair. (laughs) (laughs) Let's pray. Father, we just love you once again, Father. This time that we're just, all of us are just touching, Father. And it's all leading right here, Father. To our pastor and his family, dear Lord. Your minister, Father, your shepherd, Father. Father, continue to hold him, dear Lord. Continue to just wrap your arms around him and his family, protecting him, Father, from the evil one, dear Lord. Let him stay focused on you, Father, and your work in his life. Continue to just let him just have the words and say the words, dear Lord, that that guide us and influence us, dear Lord, closer to you, Father. And live for you, dear Lord. His, your will in his life, Father. Thank you so much for our brother, dear Lord. Thank you so much for our leader, dear Lord. Thank you so much for his willingness, dear Lord. And Father, we know he's all about what the love that he has for you that he shares with all of us, Father. And we're just so thankful for that. Be with him, be with us, dear Lord, as we leave this place today, dear Lord. Let us all go out and be a light for you. Let us shine bright for you, dear Lord. As we just think about this day, this month, we say it's Pastor Appreciation Month. Father, we should should appreciate our pastor every day, dear Lord. Pray for our pastor every day. So let us just start the day lifting him up daily. And he can feel your power, dear Lord. He can feel your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your son, Jesus, dear Lord, our Savior. And it's in all his name we pray all of this. Amen. 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 Thank y'all. Y'all come back tonight, you hear? Hello. <laughs> <laughs>